So, what's up my peeps? Matrix Native here. And in today's video, well, before we get on with today's video, first, let's go over some comments. Second, let me tell you, I have decided to reopen the polls on Twitter for viewers choice history and builds so make sure that if you're not following me on twitter you go ahead hit that link below in the comments and follow me on twitter and get your vote in i'm going to be going through a couple of my past builds i'm going to be getting some builds together off that and i'm going to let you my operators decide what the next history and build would be however for today's build operators on your feet in today's build, I give you the Combat Engineers. It has been requested a couple of times, was requested again two days ago, and I decided, why the heck not? These hitters deserve their own history and build. So with that being said, let's get on with some history. Operators, take a seat. So a Combat Engineer, also called a Field Engineer, Pioneer, or Sapper, and many other armies across the world. However, a Sapper in the United States Department of Defense, United States Military, is basically a tab you can get, and we will track on that later. However, a Combat Engineer is basically a soldier who performs a variety of construction and demolition tasks under combat conditions. The Combat Engineer's goals involve facilitating movement and support of friendly forces forces while impeding those of the enemy. Combat engineers build, repair, and maintain buildings, roads, and power supply. They employ explosives for construction and demolition projects and clear minefields using specialized vehicles. Such tasks typically include construction and breaching trenches, tank traps, and other fortifications, bunker constructions, bridge and road construction or destruction, laying or clearing landmines, and other physical work in the battlefield. Typically, a combat engineer is also trained as an infantryman, and a combat engineer units often have a secondary role as fighting as an infantryman. And again, I have a lot of respect for combat engineers, who, and really, that's why they carry the Bravo in their MOS. Their military occupational skill would be that of 12 Bravo. Combat engineers are force multipliers and enhance the survival of other troops through the use and practice of camouflage, reconnaissance, communications, and other services. These include the constructions of roads, bridges, field fortifications, obstacles, and the construction and running of water points. In these roles, combat engineers use a wide variety of hand and power tools. They are also responsible for construction rigging, the use of explosives, and the carrying out of demolitions, obstacle clearance, and obstacle constructions, assault of fortifications, use of assault boats, say in water obstacle crossings, helipad construction, general construction, route reconnaissance, and road reconnaissance. Combat engineers also build communication installations and run water distribution points, carrying out water filtration and NBC, which is nuclear biological chemical, decontamination when necessary. All these roles and activities and technologies are divided into several areas of combat engineering. Mobility improving the ability of one's own force to move around the battlefield. Combat engineers typically support this role through reduction of enemy obstacles, which include point and row minefields, anti-tank ditches, wire obstacles, concrete and metal anti-vehicle barriers, as well as India Echo Deltas. And we all know what that means. Don't want to say it or this bitch could get struck. Mechanized combat engineer units also have armored vehicles capable of laying short bridges for limited gap crossings, clearing terrain obstacles, overcoming trenches and ditches, opening routes for armored fighting vehicles, construction, roads, and bridges are just a few of many, many, many responsibilities of a combat engineer. And let's not forget they can also mix it up and get some themselves carrying that Bravo designator. 
Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm an expert on 12 Bravo Combat Engineer because I'm just not. However, I did see them on the road to Baghdad. You know, we saw the Combat Engineers. Out in front, of course, they have to lead the spear. However, you do have scouts and other, you know, forces out there trying to sneak a peek of actually what the enemies are doing as the combat infantry units are rolling up. Now along with the shit ton of responsibilities that I've already stated that a combat engineer, basically a combat infantry engineer, has to overcome, one of the biggest uh, things that they will be involved with is obviously obstacle breaching. Huh? Now for obstacle breaching, basically... The combat engineers use a variety of vehicles, explosive devices and plastic explosives, including minefield breaching devices such as dozer blades, mine rollers, Bangalore torpedoes, anti-personnel obstacle breaching system, the mine clearing line charge, bomb disposal robots, explosives, mines, and bombs. I mean, these, you know, you don't got to wear a beret to be a hitter. Who? And I got to tell you, Combat Engineer Corps is, uh, you know, they're pretty high speed if you think about everything that they're responsible for. I mean, let's face it, you know, when the Republican Guard pulls out, you know, they it's not like they don't leave mines. It's not like they don't blow up bridges to cause, you know, holdups for the NATO forces or from, you know, any other forces that are on that ass. Who And the combat engineers basically got to go out and clear that. And like I said, usually they're the tip of the spear leading brigades in to, you know, get a lick themselves. So as stated, during the war in Afghanistan and the 2003 to 2011 Iraqi war, the U.S. Army tasked its combat engineers with route clearance missions designed to counter rising threats of India Echo Deltas. To increase the effectiveness of these units, EOD and mechanic teams are typically embedded with the combat engineer platoon. Due to the rising India Echo Delta threats, U.S. Army sends some combat engineers with rank of specialist or higher, so basically E-4 or higher, to complete explosive ordnance clearance agent training to familiarize themselves with the different types of unexploded ordnance. So as stated, we're going to track on exactly what a sapper tab is in the United States military and basically what it means in other than United States military. So, so basically a sapper in the U.S., British, Indian, Canadian, Australian, and New Zealand armies is a soldier who has specialized combat engineering training. In the IDF, for instance, the Israeli Defense Force, a sapper is a military profession coach detonating a I said detonating denoting a combat engineer who has graduated from various levels of combat engineering training so basically a sapper 05 is a basic level sapper sapper 06 is a general level sapper 08 is a combat engineer commander's level and so on and so forth in the Canadian army it's a term for soldiers who have completed the basic combat engineering training in the Portuguese army a sapper an engineering sapper is a soldier of the engineering branch that has specialized in the combat engineer training. So operators, let's go ahead and track on exactly how you get the sapper tab within the United States military. So the sapper tab is a military badge of the United States Army, which was authorized on 28 June 2004 by the Army Chief of Staff. To be awarded the sapper tab, a service member may or may not hold the Military Occupational Specialty Code, basically the MOS of 12 Bravo, designated as a combat engineer, but must have graduated from the sapper leader course, basically the SLC, down there at the U.S. Army Engineer School at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. The school basically falls under the 169th Engineer Battalion, 1st Engineer Brigade. Oh, the tab was approved retroactively to the graduates of the 1st SLC on June 14, 1985. Again, the SLC being the Sapper Leadership Course. Oh, 
The Sapper Leader Course is a 28-day course designated to train joint service leaders in a small unit tactic, leadership skills, and tactics required to perform as part of a combined arms team. The course is open to enlisted soldiers in the grades of E4, E4P, so basically a specialist or specialist P, which the P designator is nothing but promotable, so you're about to be promoted to E5 buck sergeant in the Army. R, E5, and above. Students can come from any combat or combat support branch of the service, but priority is given to engineers, cavalry, and infantry soldiers. So, who are the fucking that? So, basically, Cav Scouts, infantry, and obviously engineers get the first crack at it. So, the Sapper tab is one of the four permanent individual skill slash marksmanship tabs authorized for wear by the U.S. Army. In order of presidents on the uniform, they are the President's 100 tab, the Special Forces tab, the Ranger tab, and the Sapper tab. Only three may be worn at one time, not including the tabs that are part of the shoulder sleeve insignia, such as airborne or mountain. So basically, if you're triple tab and you go get your sapper tab, or if you have four tabs, you're only authorized to wear three, which I didn't even know that. That's that's news to me, and that's who. But I don't got to worry about it because I don't have a sapper tab. Uh, tracking on. So in overview, combat engineers primarily supervise, serve, or assist as members of a team when they are tackling rough terrain in combat situations. They provide their expertise in areas such as mobility, counter-mobility, survivability, and general engineering. Job duties, as stated, construct fighting positions, fixed floating bridges, obstacles, and defensive positions, place and detonate explosives, Conduct operations that include route clearance of obstacles and rivers. Prepare and install firing systems for demolitions and explosives. Detect mines visually or with mine detectors. Basically, the job training for combat engineer requires 14 weeks of one station unit training, which includes basic combat training and advanced individual training part of this time is spent in the classroom and part in the field with on the job instructions helpful skills if you want to go down range as a combat engineer helpful skills would include ability to use hand and power tools perform strenuous physical activities over long periods of time obviously an interest in engineering would be really special and obviously enjoy working outdoors so with that being said operators on your feet let's get the fuck down range okay operators so welcome to the build portion if you've made it this far congratulations also want to pretty much uh apologizes this build hasn't got out yet uh unfortunately i've been feeling like really foggy the past week and i just uh when i get that way in my head it's just hard for me to really concentrate or really want to get motivated to do anything so i do want to apologize if you've been waiting for this build i know i got a couple little hitters out there that uh, have requested this and uh yeah so <laughs> Okay, so I think we're tracking now with the recording system I got set up so we can get on with it. So I would like to say first and foremost, I apologize. I know I've had a couple of uh, followers out there waiting for this build. I know it's been requested a couple of times. Ooh, see that explosion? That was pretty cool. However, uh, you know, uh, this week's been, I've got a lot of uh, brain fog going on. Uh, if you've ever experienced uh you know, I'm really, <laughs> it's kind of tough sometimes, so uh, try not to make any excuses, but it's really hard for me to get motivated uh, when that occurs in my life. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and track on. Go ahead, hit that back tab over to load out. This will be the first time we're actually using the new browser or the new menu up top. 
Go ahead, tap that Y, and let's get on into it. Head today, obviously, I guess you can reset every every now and then when you go back in if you don't like uh, your current character, which I guess is pretty cool, you know, but I'm going to stick with Mason. So male, Mason, eye color, I'm going to go ahead and hit the brown as in real life, facial hair. Uh, obviously, keep it clean shaven, uh, combat engineers, you know. Uh, you know, I have seen a few uh, unshaven, but uh, for the most part, the way we roll around here, we'll go ahead and keep clean shaven. Hair, we're going to go squared away today. Hair color brown, of course, all this is optional. Facial burn on the left side. Body details, uh, today I'm going with facial paint. I'm going with Bravo. You don't even actually have to put on facial paint this go around. However, if you would like to, uh, again, that is optional. I'll be going with Bravo today. Right arm, obviously Santa Maria. Left arm, mi familia, as usual, right? Status quo. Uh, clothes today, tops, we're going to keep it real. We're going to go with the Cry Combat. We'll be putting that in the 1234. Keep it real with the Multicam. Vest today, we're going to go with the armored vest today. I, I'm not hating you. If you don't got the armored vest, go ahead and equip your heavy IBA. However, whichever one you're going to put it in, go ahead and throw it in the sandstone. Again, armored vest, you know, it really does uh, fit this build today for our sapper. Let's go. Pants, why wouldn't we? Of course, we're going to go ahead and match our blouse and we're going to go with the cry combat. Again, keeping that in the 1234 multicam, trying to keep it as close to a real life as possible. Footwear today, we're just going to be wearing the hiking boot. You're going to go ahead and equip that in the 1-6 black. Ghillie suit, obviously, a zero, none, de nada. Accessories. Okay, today for eyewear, obviously, we're going to go with none. Reason being, you see what we got on, right? The old, uh, the old gas mask today. So, we'll go ahead, equip that in the none. Face wear, we're going to go with the gas mask today, also known as the M8 uh, infantry breathing apparatus. So we'll go ahead and do that because, you know, we are engineers and we will be cleaning minefields and you never know when could be instead of an HE, could be a gas mine. So you just never know. So we're going to go ahead and equip that on. Now, in actuality, you would probably have your NBC suit on as well. However, one, they don't allow us to equip it. And two, you know, I used to hate wearing that charcoal suit. So, go ahead, equip the gas mask. Go ahead and put that in the 5.6 Coyote Brown. Headwear, today we're going to go ahead, keep it real. Go ahead, put on your special MBGs with that ACH. And uh, that'll keep you squared away. Again, they do wear the Cavalier. So, we will go ahead, equip the ABG. If you don't have the NBG, just go ahead and equip the normal brain bucket. And you, whatever you put it in, make sure that your helmet cover is in the 1233 multicam headsets obviously we're going with a you're going to be putting those in the coyote brown i'm picking the beefier headset because let's face it sappers are sort of beefier dudes so headset a 36 coyote brown handwear for today got a couple of options for you but really there's only one true option which would absolutely nine times out of ten you're going to be going with none because you're not going to be wearing a whole lot of gloves when when you're dealing with ordnance right especially you know blasting cap stuff like that uh you're definitely not going to be wearing gloves so uh, however if you do want to wear gloves i'm going to go ahead and let you wear the fingerless cavalar just make sure you go ahead and put those in the sandstone so fingerless cavalar or none now, I know a lot of you guys out there want to be high speed, so you can go ahead and put the, the sniper gloves on. I wouldn't advise it with this build. However, I'll go ahead and let you do it since your thumb and your first digit is actually exposed and you'll be able to grab on to blasting caps and such like that. However, just be mindful that we try to keep it real here on our channel. So, again, fingerless Kevlar in the sandstone are you're going to go with absolutely none, huh? And that's what I'm keeping it with today is the nun. Backpacks today. Now, here's the deal. If you have the sapper open, if I can find it here. So, if you have the sapper open, you're definitely going to be wanting to hook that up. Huh? Now, if you have it open, it says here you can't get it unless you get the deluxe edition. Look, I might have the points. I might have the cash. But I'm not trying to spend any more money on this game. But if you do have the sapper, that's definitely what to go with on this build. Make sure you put it in Coyote Brown. Or, actually, you can put it in Sandstone. If you've been following me for a while, you know there's really no difference in 
in your rucksack when it comes to the colors between sandstone and coyote brown. So if you have the sapper pack, you definitely want to go with the sap pack, right? However, for people, if you're like me, little uh, little hitters, then you already know that we're going with the 511 All Hazards Prime Pack if you don't have the Sapper Pack. If you have the Sapper Pack, again, as stated, you definitely want to go ahead and equip that. However, since I don't have it, as stated, obviously, Captain Obvious, uh, 511 All Hazards Prime Pack. I like that it's got, you know, our electrical tape there. Kind of looks like a HUA type engineer type pack. So, again, go ahead put that bad boy in the 933 coyote brown now i was thinking uh if you really wanted to you could also go ahead and put that disruptor on but whatever you put on just make sure that you got it in the 933 coyote brown i really do like this disruptor however that would be more i think for uh comms for an rto type fit and not for the engineer so with that being said i will give you that option however Go ahead, stick that bad boy in the 511 Hazard Prime pack with Nueve 33, Coyote Brown. Patches, obviously, come on, let's go. Let's roll, my peeps. And that's pretty much going to do it for the fit today with our sapper. Looking pretty cool, I must admit. Okay, I don't know if Top Dylan's in the stream. Uh, sorry, you know, I had some issues there before. But yes, this would be the Combat Engineer Sapper uh, build that we're doing today. Okay, so getting on with it today. You're going to go ahead. This is the first time I believe that I've ever actually equipped this for our primary. And we're going to go ahead and hit the M4 A1 tactical. Obviously, there's not a whole lot we can do with it. As you can see, it's got the digital scope on it. I do like that. It's got the foregrip. It really fits the build today as well as, you know, the little camouflage that, that they decided, you know, the camo that we should put it in. However, I do like this, the M4 A1 tactical. If, uh, you know, for this build, I definitely like this. I like the camouflage to it. It really, it really fits up with our multicam pretty well. Now, I will tell you, if you don't have this unlocked, no worries. Just grab you an M4. Go ahead and spec it up pretty much like this. So, uh, you know, you're going to have your two times. You're going to have a four grip. Uh, stay with the 30-round mag to keep it real. And uh, that's basically it. But if you got the M4A1 tactical, go ahead and bring it out. Again, reminding you that you are able to to uh, disable or enable the suppressor on this weapon. That is a choice. Other than that, you really can't do a whole lot to it. Again, you see the little dog tags right there. I think that's, uh, I think that's kind of uh, kind of gay, to be honest. But, uh, you know, who am I? Who am I? Ubisoft knows all, right? And as you know, I never call Ubisoft out. <laughs> they just make it so easy. So, today, M4A1 Tactical, that's what we're going to be hitting with for this hitter today. For our primary secondary now I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this however secondary today we're gonna to go ahead and go with the mark 48 and this is why a lot of engineers now they they work in front of the lines right they're they're out there you're out there with the lurcher units and you know the devil dogs and and all those guys around snooping and pooping trying to get a peek of what the enemy's up to as the engineers are advancing to clear the path for the brigade obviously you're out there uh, meters and meters ahead of the main element. So you will definitely be carrying an LMG. You might not be carrying it on you. It might be in your engineer vehicle that you can run back and set up on. But nine times out of ten, you will have Overwatch within your, within your stick, your squad, your platoon, however you want to call it. You will have Overwatch that will more than likely be set up with this bad boy here. So let's go ahead and dress this bad boy out, shall we? Okay, now obviously we're going with paints. We're just going to go with black because, again, we try to keep it real. If you ain't here to be real, then just get on down the road, huh? Now, stock, obviously, stock bug stock. Now, for the scope today, again, everybody knows that I'm just a little upset about not having an ACOG for our LMG. So today we're going to go ahead and put the EO tech on it and drive on. Make sure you got that in the gray. Trigger, hey, let's go. Full auto only. Magazine, we're going to go ahead and go with the extended box 200. Why would we not? Again, half the time, this is going to be in, you know, whatever engineer vehicle you're going to be in. Again, unless your, your tank commander or your track commander or whatever you guys call it in the engineers advises you to get out and set up for overwatch positions right so again go ahead throw that bad boy in the 200 and let's put that in the one two black under barrel obviously the four grip victor four just because one 
Look how our accuracy runs down with any other under barrel that we've got equipped. So the foregrip Victor 4, I've always stated and I will always state that it's one of the best attachments that you can get on this specific game. So with that foregrip Victor 4, we're going to put that in the 1-2 black rail. We're going to keep it clean as I... Uh, a lot of times I will do with my LMGs, especially the Mark 4.8. We're going to keep it clean and just go with the rail cover. Barrel, we're going to throw the long barrel on there. And that gives us what? That gives us even that much more range as we're covering our buddy's ass. So, so long barrel, go ahead and stick that in the gray. And then muzzle, obviously, the compensator Victor 2. Again, in my opinion, one of the best muzzles in this game that they afford us to equip. Put that in the 1 2 black. And there it is. That's what we're taking down range today as an engineer in case we need to cover that ass. And really, I mean, why wouldn't we, honestly? I know a lot of people will disagree with with this option here however i'm telling you engineers absolutely absolutely will carry an lmg somebody will have an lmg ready to come out and give supporting fire so with that being said hey that's what we're gonna carry i had to spit sorry okay let's do this so for today it's pretty simple the handgun we're going with we'll be going with the m9 full show why wouldn't we? It's what it's what they're issued, the Beretta, and it's actually a decent firearm. It's not my nightstand, obviously. If you know what, I got a couple of choices of what my nightstand weapon would be. If you know them, go ahead and throw it in the comments. But today, we're going with the Beretta. Now, parts, we're going to go ahead. Again, not looking like an R-Tard. We're going to keep it in the standard 15. Go ahead and throw that bad boy in black. Rail cover, keep it clean. Throw that in the gray. Barrel, again, you know, one choice. We'll go with the standard barrel. Go ahead and throw that in gray. And then, of course, we're going with the stock muzzle. Obviously, we're going to have the suppressor. You're going to put your suppressor in black. However, stock muzzle, we're going to go with gray. And we're going to drive on with that. But at that 9mm, standard issue of most United States Army military units. So, so today, we're going to switch it up a little, being engineers. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm personally not going to switch it up right now. However, you might want to go with the explosive or the EMP, seeing how this is a sapper build. So, again, not hating your explosive EMP, or if you want, you can stay with your medic drone. But staying with the fit, you'll either be going with the EMP or the explosive, and you'll let another member of your team Go ahead and equip said medic if you're the designated sapper for the team. Huh. Okay, now we switch it down here. You know me. You can only carry two of the three if we're on mission. Now, today, I know what you're thinking, Matrix. Why haven't you opened the mine or the C4? And to be honest, I have no excuse for that. I just really don't use them a lot in game. However, sticking with this build today, you will unash everything except your mine c4 and frag grenade so this time around we won't be carrying flash we won't be carrying diversion uh basically you can carry your flare gun because they only work half ass and then you'll go ahead and quip up with 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 demolition so so frag grenade mine and c4 that's what you're going to be rolling with today as today's sapper hitter build on folds so with that being said that's today's build i really hope you appreciate it again Sorry about the history. I'm, I'm just, I can't explain it. If you guys ever had scrambled brains, you know what I'm saying. If you've ever crossed a path with one of them nasty India Echo Deltas, you know how your brain can get sometimes. A little fuzzy, a little disorientated. However, today's build, again, dedicated to all my engineer class hitters out there, a.k.a. sappers. Hope you enjoyed today's build. Hope you have an amazing day today. I hope tomorrow's amazing. I hope yesterday is amazing. Do me a favor. Tell all your friends about my channel. Go ahead, snipe, like, snipe, roll. Hey, I said snipe, the like, snipe, the roll. Go ahead, snipe, like. <laughs> I'm all off right now, boys. Completely off today. Off it. Off the mark. Go ahead, snipe like, snipe the sub. Tell your friends about my channel and my peeps. Operate 41. I'll catch you next time. You guys stay here. Cuz that's how we roll.
See, we'd, we'd have a charge down there if that was the mission.